back uh, to the Week in Review. If you see my emotions every now and then, it's called passion. I have a passion for the political process, and I, and I think we should get engaged and, and, and feel part of the process. You know, one of the big issues in the United States is that we have two parties that pretty well control the whole apparatus. If you're not a Democrat, you've got to be a Republican. The reason is because either Democrats win or Republicans win. And we also know that those two parties are so powerful that when we, the people, had an open primary concept here, when we could all go vote. Those two parties went uh, to the courts and they stopped us from engaging in that kind of a strategy, which means you can vote for a Republican for this and a Democrat for that and so on and so forth. So now we're cut back to where it's the parties and we only have two parties that really run the show in this great country. Is that good? Is it bad? You know, we know a lot of the world does it differently. We're going to talk about the rest of the world uh, with Rod Donald. That's Good right, to have Bill. you. You look Good like Larry here. King with your suspenders. Well, he, he I don't know whether that's a compliment, the show. but never mind. Well, he's a big shot, and he gets Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. I don't get Arnold, don't, but, yeah, but he but gets get quality. it. Um, well, God bless you for that. You're from uh, uh, New Zealand. How many people live there? We've got just on four million people. And now. how big A lot more country? sheep, though. Not more sheep, that's right. <laughs> I don't well, know, you know there, I don't know exactly what size we are, but let, let's say we're about the size of California. Okay. Now, you're a member of the Green Party, um, and you're in the New Zealand Parliament. So how does that happen in New Zealand? doesn't happen here. Uh, the key, the trick, is proportional representation. What's that? That's, well, that's really a system where parties win seats in Parliament according to their popular support. It's a novel idea, isn't it? As opposed to by the district. Yeah, well, we, d we have a combination of both. We have what they call a mixed member system, which is based on the German model. And it only, it's only been in since 1996, and, and my previous hat was as an electoral reform campaigner. And so from the mid-80s through to 93, I was one of a citizens group that went out there and campaigned to get a fair electoral system. Now, we, we didn't do it on our own in the sense that, bless them, a Labour government, like your Democrats equivalent, um, in 1984 had set up a royal commission to look at the electoral system. And that commission, uh, august judges and other people, said we need to change. First past the post, what you've got here just doesn't well, work. Well, explain again what proportional represent. How does it work? How does it work? The voters go to the polling booth, they get two votes under our system, one for the party of their choice, and one for the local representative, the district representative of their choice. The party vote term determines the overall number of seats that each party gets, and the number of constituency seats is subtracted from your party entitlement, and the difference is made up from people from the party list, your list MPs. But I don't want to bury people in the, in the minutiae of it. The key thing is it's fair because parties win seats in proportion to their votes. And that end, that's the end of the two-party club. It's ironic. The two old parties in New Zealand didn't like the change. But, uh, they were both free market parties when it comes to the economy. We said, hey, this is free market in, in politics. The voters have the yeah, power. Yeah, but, but saying that the criticism that they give of, of your system is Italy and Israel, where you have all these minor parties, and the only way they can govern is forming coalitions. Coalitions don't last long and then they constantly have to reform the government. Sure. The stability concept is what we're told. Yeah, yeah, but what you do is, in our case, we put in a threshold 5%. If your party doesn't win 5% popular support, then you don't get any seats. And surely, if 5% of the people support your party, they deserve a voice in Parliament. I mean, we call it a House of Representatives. Let's make it a House of Representatives. So how do you talk to Americans about this? I mean, other than a Green Party person who agree with you, how do you get the rest of us to, to see this as valid and really democratic and, and something that we should adopt? It's one of the reasons I'm here. I'm mainly here, actually, to look at your bottle bills, because uh, in a former life, I was a recycling officer, and I've got a passion about recycling. You talk about passion. My politics is, is, is all about passion for, for causes. But the message really here is fairness. You know, you want fair play in sport. You want when teams go on to the paddock to have an umpire who's going to make sure that everyone gets a fair go, surely when it comes to politics, you want everyone to get a fair go. You want people included in the process. And I mean, I guess... <laughs> How many parties are there, though? The, the two in our I, parliament, there are seven in, in parties. The two main ones, equivalent to yours, so Labour. So seven of them get, get, get because they got 5% or more? Um, or one exception. We have one exception. If you win a constituency, a district, then you're entitled to your share of list seats. So there's one tiny party with one constituency member and one list member. 
So they've got two, and then the main party, Labour, um, is in coalition with that tiny party, actually. Labour's got 52 seats. We've got 120 altogether. So we've actually got a minority coalition government. It's governing very stably. It relies on us, the Greens, a lot of the time, particularly when it's progressive legislation, environmental or, or um, workers' rights, social. And it works with a centre party called United on other things. What's the main impact of your party in New Zealand? Sorry. Main impact? Well, I think it's been a significant impact. Uh, we've, we've got a very diverse bunch of people in Parliament. Myself, um, who's come from an electoral reform background, my other co-leader and environmentalist, we've got a rust of Ferian MP, for example, a former uh, workers' rights um, uh, activist. But the thing is, we've almost become mainstream now, and so the government relies on us for any decent environmental legislation or labour legislation. And um, the world's changed as a result. We've got a very diverse House of Representatives. So the environment is your major issue? I'd say first equal with social justice, but we're also committed to non-violence and, you know, at the personal and the international level. We were the only party that voted against uh, New Zealand sending our SAS to Afghanistan, for example. We were against that. And we, we worked hard on our government to stop them sending troops to Iraq, and they didn't, fortunately. Why would you be against sending to Afghanistan if you're for women? This was what needed to happen to help the women of Afghanistan. Sure, it, it might have been. But if you're going to go there, then you've got to go into Myanmar and all sorts of other countries. We're still in a position where you don't wade into every other country and impose your rule of law on them. And also, he just made the point that they are nonviolent. You know, first of all, well, they were pretty when violent. When can I the go? Taliban against the women really of Afghanistan. Oh, New Zealand. You know how 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 welcoming is New Zealand to to uh, immigrants to to people who emigrate there? That two, I have two questions. And also, do you use uh, instant runoff voting? Do, are you familiar with that? I answered the first question. We're quite welcoming to immigrants, especially to refugees. We've taken a number of refugees from hot spots in the world. You do have to meet a criteria to come, and that's actually been tightened up a bit recently, probably for good reasons. Instant runoff voting, well, that's been one of my successes since I've come to Parliament. Having got in under MMP, our mixed member proportional system, for the national level, I've managed to get a bill through Parliament to bring in instant runoff voting for local bodies. So next year, all of our health boards will be elected by instant runoff voting voting, and 10 of our 74 councils have chosen, because it was an opt-in situation, have chosen to use IRV. Well, we, it's IRV for the mayor, and it's what we call single transferable vote, which is multi-member preferential for the council. Explain this uh, uh, instant runoff voting. How does it work? Real simple. Candidates, instead of having to just tick one candidate, can rank them one, two, three, four in their order of preference. And the beauty is, if your first choice doesn't get in, instead of your vote being wasted, which usually happens, your vote transfers to your second choice. And if you've got a, a, a multi uh, ward, a multi member situation in the ward, you're electing, say, five people, then you get a proportional result because not only does your vote transfer if your first choice doesn't get in, but if your first choice romps in, instead of your vote being undervalued, it transfers. So it's, a, it's what we've done is taken one person, one vote, and made sure it's got one value. And that's the key. One person, one vote means nothing if your vote doesn't carry a value. Gary, what do you think about these? These are revolutionary ideas for the American political system. Multi-parties, get a percentage of the vote, go into elected office, instant runoff voting. What about them? Well, we have multi-parties now, and to the extent they're successful at generating support, they'll grow. Um, and we'll see the Green Party in the United States grows by virtue of pulling more people in. Um, an instant runoff... Um, you know, something that certainly could uh, want to consider, I guess, it's probably unlikely to be uh, passed because just like campaign finance reform, the folks who write the laws have a vested interest in the status quo. So it's probably an idea that has some theoretical merit, perhaps, but it probably won't have much practical Joseph, impact. Joseph, hearing what he's saying, let's face it, special interests do strangulate the political process. Half the American people didn't vote in the last presidential election, and you saw the guys get in the back room and, and decide how Sorry. their districts would be, congressional or assembly and senate. You know? So what about what he's saying? I think it's very interesting, and I'm always as all now putting on a political science hat. Yeah, of, professor. That, I, we're, we're always interested in trying to improve. By the way, just to pick up what, what Gary said about the other parties, I, I'm going to slight somebody. You know, there is the American Independent, and there's Peace and Freedom, and in addition uh, to the Green Party. I happen to think there's a lot to be said for that, when it's, as opposed to either or, yeah. as opposed to Tweedledee, Tweedledum, and, exactly. and, and even the possibility that uh, they're, they're so similar. 
uh, I, I do observe other countries, and uh, the one I'm more familiar with is Italy. Uh, maybe there's, there's 30, well, there's 50 some odd, but uh, 13 actually means something mm. in some of the situation when they were there with them. But then they do get together at the end, and they have center left and center right. Right now, they have a center right government. Gets more uh, participation, doesn't it? Well, they, the they get a high. I said. I mean, we're disappointed with our last election. We only got 77 percent turnout. Yeah, we would. We would. <laughs> the people around this table would love to get even close to that number when you recognize we're lucky if we can get a majority. And that's of the people who are registered, not the people who are eligible to be registered. The, but my, my question is this, you know, um, how much of your, of, 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 how many programs are socialized? For example, you have universal health care, don't you? Yep. And it really works in New mm, Zealand. That's yeah. right. Uh, what, I what about, believe you having to have a proposition. What, what, yeah, what it, it is amazing, isn't it, we, that we don't have that yet. What, what about um, transportation? Is that socialized? In what sense? Yeah. I mean, there well, is I mean, is it pub public yep. transportation? Does it do, is it run by the government or is it privately run as it is here? Unfortunately, we moved to a lot of privately run transportation in the last decade or so. But the the state subsidises that in urban situations to make sure there is a good public yeah. transport What's your tax infrastructure. So, so there is a lot of pressure in New Zealand, I understand, to move to the right. Well, there was, and we, that was worse between '84 and '90. But we're actually getting swinging the pendulum back the other. The way. And that's one of the differences yeah. we've made in Parliament. I mean, we've we've had one bill passed for energy conservation, which has been good. One of the things we're working with the government on at the moment, as though we're in coalition, it's an interesting relationship we have. We're not in it, but we're working as right. though it's on transport, and it's going to go more social, more public, more rail, more walking, more cycling, What's your taxation, less motorways. What's taxation, Rod? How much taxation? Um, top marginal tax rate for somebody well paid like me is 39%. So what's the highest? Is it good? 50%? No, 39. 39% is the top. Plus we have a, a, what we call a GST on all goods. Right, help, and a half. help me out, would you? I, I, you're, you're four million people. You're in a beautiful country, far away from here. Down under. Way. Okay, we call it down under here. Um, uh, reflect, would you, on how America is viewed around the planet? You know, we hear only one side all the time. We hear a war on terrorism. We have to go out there and 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 do what we're doing in this country or that country. Um, we feel we're a democracy. We're blessed. We know that. But what do you think of us as a people and as a politic right now today? And don't be political and diplomatic. No, Tell us the truth. Um, we love your people. And there's a lot of good things that happen here, um, but we really don't like what your government's doing. For instance? Uh, well, for instance, uh, Iraq. Um, I mean, we, in New Zealand, and it's not just the left anymore, it's right across the centre. Um, Bush isn't well regarded. He's not seen as a very intelligent person. And it, America, the American administration is seen as bullies. What, what International don't you like bullies. about Iraq? What don't we like about Iraq? Yeah. Well, it had nothing to do with September 11 to start with. And um, Saddam Hussein was, was a despicable tyrant. Uh, but you don't wade in the way it was done and overthrow him. I mean, if anything, you use the United Nations framework. Now and the irony is tried now, that and it well, didn't work. Well, but it, what's happened now? You might have won For the war, but you're years. losing the peace. No, this yeah. is a long-term exercise, and ultimately yeah, we will prevail. And it'll be you'll, your country will be better off, even though you've not contributed. If we do, well, if we win in a war, war of terror, the and we didn't start this war. Thank you. Yeah, well, we, mean, we, we don't we, all agree with him, by the way. You yeah. do know no, that. That's well, that's fine. There is but, a I mean, America is seen as international bullies. I'm sorry, I have to say that. Yeah, well, and your corporates you come down much. under like your Monsantos and try and impose genetic engineering on us, um, which we're opposed to. Um, the whole the whole attitude towards free trade, which is really about exploiting people in third world countries. What did you think of the Khan conference where this uh, group all got together that fell apart? Yeah, Explain what your thoughts on that. Well, well, they were being told on the one hand that America and the European Union were trying to backslide on getting rid of farm, farm support and export incentives, which undermines third world countries, particularly food security. On the other hand, they were being told they were going to have to open up to new investment regimes, again to allow the big corporates to come in and, and exploit their, um, their investment opportunities. And they just said no. They put their feet down. Enough is enough. I want to Thank ask you. you about your Defense Department and your Army. You know, yep. uh, a tremendous amount of our, of our um, money goes to, to defense. And we have a, a $450 billion defense budget, soon to be $500 billion, tremendous proportionately. Um, 
proportionately, how much does New Zealand spend on defense? About 1%. I think it might be 1.3. Uh, it is, it is well, tiny. You no, but compare that's, New Zealand that's, that's to the silly. United States of well, America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we don't I try mean, and be global policemen. We try and be global peacemakers. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we send our army to places like East Timor to help reconstruct there. And let's face it, look what America did in East Timor. We've sent them to Bougainville and helped there. We've got them in the Solomon Islands right at the moment. And we do have engineers in Iraq. We do have troops in, in Afghanistan. If it wasn't for America, Jap Japan, Japanese would be the, the language of New Zealand. I mean, there is something about being the world policeman when, when you have tyrants and people who threaten your freedom. There's yeah. someone needs to stand up and say, well, you we're what we've got now, so much of our economy is owned by the Japanese, the Americans, the Germans, the British. I mean, the, the economic imperialism um, hasn't been as violent as the military takeover that you talk, would talk about that would have happened. Um, but let's face it, 19, you know, 1939 to 45 is a long time ago. And we should not be living in, in a different. Affairs. We should be living in a different world. It's and no matter how big your army, your and navy, so your air force, you're not going to stop terrorism was, that way. Uh, what was this East Timor business you were talking about? East Timor. Explain Timor. that in terms of the United States. You said the United States. Uh, you made a comment. Well, I, uh, my history isn't exactly accurate to remember which U.S. president it was. Was in um, Jakarta just before the Indonesians invaded. But the deal was, don't invade until our president leaves and go back home, and then nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you go in and we won't try and stop you. And it took 25 years for the world to face up to, to their complicity in that invasion and the, and the terror and the, just the genocide. Oh, so, so the oppressed. United States has been global policemen to combat the civil war in Indonesia, is that what you're suggesting? No, the, you, you went the other way. You well, said, we, to, you we said to the Indonesian the, government, we go ahead, we'll turn around? a blind eye. I mean, New Zealand sent troops in as soon as it was feasible to do that. Oh, so you were, you were global policemen then? Okay. No, we All were right, peacekeepers. Listen, I um, <laughs> appreciate what you're saying. Uh, we're Fair enough. Final comment. What's your take on our recall? Oh, thank goodness we don't have it in New Zealand. It's a, it's a poor second choice to instant runoff voting, because uh, I agree with both of you, and, and the Democrats need to put up better candidates. The only way they'll do that is if there's serious competition from third parties. The only way that will happen is if you have a fair electoral system. But the other thing I'd say to California, hey, you had Ronald Reagan. Why would you want Arnold Schwarzenegger? Freedom.